Hello and welcome. In today's video, I want to talk about how you can set up SSH keys. So you can SSH a remote server without typing in a password every single time. So let me go one step backwards here, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So when connecting to a Linux server via SSH, there are two types of authentication. Password-based authentication and key pair-based authentication. So I assume that you're familiar with password-based authentication, and in this video, I'll cover how we can generate the key pair and use it for SSH access. Using an SSH key is considered more secure than using a password. And on top of that, you can use a password for the private key itself. So you get an additional layer of security. So let's head over to the terminal. So the creation of the key pair should be done on the client. And I want to emphasize it because personally, it took me a while to wrap my head around this idea. So the private key is equivalent to a password. And that's how we allow access to a specific user account on the server. And just like we won't use the same password for all of the user accounts, we won't use the same private key for all of them. This way, even if someone gets their hands on the private key of a specific user account, they won't be able to access any other user account. Another consideration is that if we would generate the key pair on the server, we would have to somehow move the private key to the client. And moving private keys over the network is something that's better avoided altogether. It's something that should be generated on a machine and just stay put. So all in all, it's easier and generally better to generate the key pair on the client. So let's go ahead and generate the key pair. And this is done by the SSH keygen command. And we can then specify the type of encryption we want to use for the key pair. And there are quite a few available encryption types. But the bottom line is that RSA is probably still the most common option, so that's what I'll use. And then we can specify the number of bits in the encryption. And then go with 4096, which should be quite secure. We can then specify where we want to save the key, but I'll go with the default, so I'll just press enter. And now we have the option to enter a passphrase. This can be important if someone gets access to your private key, they would still have to know the passphrase to use it. So the bad guys would have to have something, that would be the private key itself, and they also would have to know something, that's the passphrase. So you could say that it's two-factor authentication. You can go without a passphrase, and as long as no one has access to your private key, you will be okay. It's just an extra layer of security. Anyway, for this demonstration, I will use a passphrase. And that's it. Our keys have been generated, and we're told where we can find them. Let's take a look at them. So the public key is the one with the pub extension, and let's see its contents. Okay, let's move on to the server. So my server is a Debian server running in a virtual machine. First, we have to make sure that the server has OpenSSH server installed. All that's left is copy over the public key to the server. But it raises its own question. How can it be done securely? The whole purpose of the key pair is to create an encrypted channel. But again, we still don't have the public key on the server, so we don't have the encrypted channel yet. So how can it transfer the public key? It's a good question. And I'm going to cover one possible solution, and that's to rely on password-based SSH, the very authentication method that we want to replace. So let's configure the server to accept SSH connections with password authentication. To do that, we need to edit sshd config. And we need password authentication to be yes, or it can be commented out. 
And then we can use password authentication for SSH. And after every change in this file, we need to restart the SSH service. So we temporarily allow password authentication, so we can transfer the public key. You can use SCP to transfer the key manually, but I use a tool called SSH Copy ID. What's convenient about this tool is that on top of transferring the public key to the server, it places it in the correct path and applies the correct file permissions. So let's find the IP address of the server. And now let's run SSH Copy ID. and we need to type in the password. And the public key was moved to the server. We will now have a .ssh folder in the home folder. And in it, we will have a file called authorized keys. And if we take a look at the contents of this file, it's the very same public key that we generated in the client. So now that we're done copying the public key to the server, we can turn off password authentication. And let's restart the SSH service again. And let's try to log into the server without a password. And we need to type in the passphrase for using the private key. And we logged in and we didn't send the password of the user account. That would be all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.